Hello, my name is Yaba Beidou and I'm about to do a reading for the Jalik Prize um, for which my novel Lionheart Girl has been long listed. The story of Lionheart Girl is the story of Sheba and her relationship with her mother who's a very dangerous woman and it's a story of how Sheba manages to come into her own and defeat her mother and claim her destiny for herself. Sheba has a gift. She has the gift of touch, which means that when she does people's hair, she's able to see their thoughts and see conversations they've had. Uh, this section that I'm going to read from is a section where um, Sheba does her best friend Amma's hair. And this is what happens when her mother, Sika, arrives on the scene. Amma's face is round and her spirit, despite her ant bite tongue, is, for the most part, in sympathy with mine. Above all, she's my friend. Why else would she defy her mother to come to our house? I part her hair and then carefully wrap portions of it in spiky sheaves of black cotton until, within an hour, her hair sticks out like the quills of an angry porcupine. Onigi, Aunt Clara says, naming a Nigerian style she's taught me from her time there. Sticks. My dear, you've captured your friend's rebellious spirit perfectly. After kissing her fingers, as if imagining the very best pepper soup, my aunt passes me a large mirror which I hold in front of Amma. Amma smiles, a smile of such intense satisfaction, it warms my face as much as standing in sunlight does. I grin, big head, beautiful hair. A hand on her heart, Amma bows. You, my friend, are good at this hair talk matter. She says those words, and Ma walks in. Hips rolling, sandals clattering. Kappa, kappa, kappa. A woman in motion, strolling, all eyes on her. Larger than life, skin alight with a molten glow that heralds her name. Sika, gold, a woman of great wealth and good fortune. Wouldn't you stare at a well-dressed woman in a village as small as ours? And when that woman struts with the confidence of a catwalk model, head high, shoulders back, while wearing the best Nigerian shedder that no one else can afford to buy, people stare even more. I certainly do. What did you say, Ma Asama? Ama doesn't know that Ma hasn't a clue about this hair talk matter that she has no idea I have a gift and Aunt Clara is helping me grow it. My friend, still mesmerized by her reflection, wriggles hips and shoulders in a dance of joy. Arms open, Amma spins around gleeful at her new look. Auntie Sika, look how beautiful I am, she cries. Irrepressible, a balloon bobbing up and down, she spins a second time. Not even a curled lip can dispel Amma's delight today. Putting an arm around me, she hugs me. Thank you, Sheba. Thank you, Lionheart Girl. Mm, are you calling my little chick here Lionheart Girl? This girl? Ma's never seen Maybe's portrait of me. I keep it hidden in Grandma Baby's boudoir for safekeeping, as I would a lucky charm. I blink twice at Amma. Don't tell her. Don't say a thing. Sheba did my hair, auntie. Am I cool or what? Amma, shoulders shimmying, boogies her way back to the mirror Aunt Clara's holding. Ma steps closer to inspect my handiwork. A finger prodding my friend's forehead, she tilts her head up and down and then swivels it from side to side. I hold my breath. Mmm, Ma sniffs. It's almost impossible to make a head shape like a coconut attractive, but I'll say this for you, Sheba. You've tried. Indeed, you've tried. Aunt Clara winces. Sika, if you can't find something good to say, don't say anything. Tell me, Clara, Ma replies. How is it that a childless woman such as you dares tell me a mother of three how to speak to a friend of my daughter? Aunt Clara lowers her lashes, while Amma shine, vivid as a firefly moments before, flutters and fades. Ma pokes Amma's forehead again. It's the shape of your head that worries me, child. I advised your mother to ask Nana Sewa to mould it when you were born. Nana did my head. 
Sheba's as well. That's why we Prempers look so much better than your lot. It's at times like this that I want to hide. My innards quailing, I squeeze Amma's hand. Quills quivering with rage, her pupils shrink to sparks of anger. Chin out, she pulls back her shoulders and ready to bite puckers her lips. Antisika, Sheba here is my bestie best. Where she goes, I go. Where she stays, I stay. One day, one day, we're going to leave this village and open a salon in Accra. And when we do, we'll work on all sizes and shapes of heads. Coconut heads, pineapple heads, pea heads, all of them, won't we, Sheba? Best of all, we'll even do the hair of people with no friends whatsoever. People like you, Auntie. Revealing a glint of teeth in a rare smile, Ma replies, I wish my Sheba had half the spirit you do. And with that, she turns and saunters up the stairs, chuckling. <laughs>